How do we use light, color, and detail to create images like this one when we edit our photos? Let's find out! Hello amigos, this is Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. In the last episode of my raw edit series, I show you how I edited this image of these three beautiful bisons in Yellowstone. And I wanted the bisons to really pop and come out like if they were alive in the image. Today, we're gonna work this other image. And this is the Stellar J, a beautiful blue bird. Uh, the habitat for this bird are the mountainous regions of the American continent, all the way from Alaska to Central America. And I took this photo not too long ago, right outside my city of Albuquerque, New Mexico, in the Manzano Mountains. When I edited this photo to get this result, I had in mind the use of light, color, and detail to have the bird stand out and come out alive from the background. The raw image is this one. The bird is a little small on the frame. I took this image with a Canon R7, 32 megapixels, 6960 by 4640. And I was using the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeters. I was at 500 millimeters. With the crop factor of the R7, that's equivalent on full frame cameras to 800 millimeters. And I tried to get a little close, but then the bird flew away. So this is the raw file as it came out of the camera. So let's roll up our sleeves and edit this image. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to crop. So I crop to the crop tool. I want to maintain the environment. I don't want to have the bird too small in the frame. The tail of the bird is a little close to the bottom edge of the photo and I want to have a sense of the environment in which this beautiful bird lives in. Something like that. I want to leave more room on the right since the bird is looking that way. I may crop a little bit more or move it a little more to the left. I showed you before with the letter L you can turn off the lights in Lightroom and that really helps you adjust your cropping to get a better result. You hit the letter L and you're back. So this is the crop. Now the bird is a little dark, so we're gonna use light and color and detail to make the bird kind of pop out of the image. First thing I'm going to do after cropping the image is do my global adjustments. I'm gonna bring my highlights down. The sky was a little blown, something like that. I'm going to open the shadows. This reduces contrast in the image, but we'll deal with that a little bit later. I'm gonna reduce the whites. I can hit the, the Alt key and make sure I don't have any burn areas. And then I'm going to reduce the blacks and that you know brings back some of the contrast. And this is kind of my global adjustment. Global adjustments, I'm just trying to get to a good baseline to start doing creative or selected adjustments. We're gonna work on the bird first. We go to the mask area and the select subject in Lightroom keeps improving with every Lightroom upgrade. You know, it uses artificial intelligence to recognize subjects. Sometimes it does a perfect job, other times not as perfect. In this case, it selected the bird well, but it selected some areas, some of the branches. So we're gonna clean them up. We go to subtract. I'm gonna use the brush and I'm just gonna erase the areas that I don't want. You can hit the letter O and get an idea if it went over some area. So this area here on the side of the head, I'm just gonna delete. And there we have the bird selected, something like here. I'm gonna add the beak. So add, do the same thing with the brush. And I'm just gonna do the beak. Alt key with a smaller to erase where I went over. And you know, you spend your time refining your mask. 
but I did it very quickly here. Letter O again, it brings it up to what we want. Now the part is a little dark, so I'm going to increase the exposure about a third. I'm going to increase my highlights to bring some of those high tones, you know, make them a little brighter. And it's already looking better. So now I'm going to bring detail to the bird. So I'm going to increase texture. That brings us a lot of texture on the bird. You don't want to go over too much. So something like, you know, 20 points or so. I'm going to bring clarity. Clarity brings some contrast to the mid-tones, but also adds detail to the bird. And again, you don't want to go too heavy. That's very unreal. So something like, you know, again, 20 points or so gives it a very nice result. And now we're going to go to saturation. When we move to the right, it's the same as vibrance. When we move to the left and subtract saturation, I think it's more like real saturation. So we're going to go up and increase saturation a bit or vibrance. And that makes the blue really pop quite a bit. And now I'm going to make the bird big with the space bar. And I'm going to click on the eye. And I'm going to bring my sharpness up. And I'm looking at the results and something like 30 or 40 points is what is going to work. Space bar again. And there it is. Let's look at the mask. Yes, with that mask alone, this is what we've been able to do. So I'm going to turn it off. That's with the mask off. And this is with the effects that we have done. Already the bird is more prominent in the image. Now looking at what I have done, now I want to concentrate on the head of the bird. We typically go look at the eyes of people, the eyes of animals. And the head is dark, so I'm going to add a little additional light to the head. I'm going to create a new mask. I'm going to go with the brush. And I'm just going to paint on the head of the bird. If I go over the mask, the Alt key turns it into minus and I can reduce. So now I have the mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the exposure a bit. Something like 0.4 or so on. I'm going to add contrast. And I'm going to add some additional clarity for additional contrast on the mid-tones that we just created by increasing the exposure. So this is with the mask off on the head. And this is with the mask on. And you can see the difference trying to get that detail and balance the tones a little better on the head of the bird. Now, I want to add a vignette. We had the vignette tool in Lightroom, but the vignette tool, the way it works, it just darkens the edges around the periphery of our image. And the bird is not on the center. But I want to do other things than just darkening. I'm going to make the photo a little smaller on my display. And to do that, I'm going to use the Control key and minus. And, you know, I keep selecting and you see it makes the photo smaller on my monitor. I'm going to add a radial filter. So I go to the mask. I'm going to create a new mask. I'm going to create a radial gradient right here on the bird. Something like that. I'm going to come down. And I went over the photo. I think usually I get a little better results by going over than just limiting the radio filter just to the image itself. I don't want to apply the effect to the bird, so I'm going to invert it. And now the effect is going to be to the area that is shown in magenta here. And what do I want to do? Well, I want to darken it a bit, you know, something like 0.2. I'm also going to reduce the highlights a bit. And I'm going to reduce clarity. Reducing clarity is going to soften the areas covered by the vignette. I don't want to go to 100%, but a vignette of negative something like minus 17, minus 20, you know, that gives me the effect of I want to retain the detail on the bird and the area on the bird. 
but I want to soften the rest of the image. Our eyes are guided by light, color, and detail. And I want people that see this image to automatically go towards the area where the bird is because the background is a little bit busy, right? We're showing the background of the bird, but we don't want the background to dominate. So now we are done with our masks. The next thing I want to do is deal with noise. I took this image at ISO 3200 and there is a bit of noise. I took it with the Canon R7 and we zoom in at 100%. You can see the, the noise, especially in the shadow areas of uh, the image. We already apply detail or sharpness to the birds. So I'm going to go to detail. And first, I'm going to create a mask. You know, Lightroom automatically applies the default setting in Lightroom is 40 points of sharpening. And that's so that the, the photo is a little soft after the demo shaking process. So Lightroom automatically puts 40 points of sharpening and applies it everywhere in the photo. I don't want that. I want to create a mask so that sharpening is only applied to areas that actually have some real content. With the all key, I go to mask and I move it to the right. And now areas in black are not being sharpened. Basically, I'm protecting those areas from the sharpening. I don't want to enhance the noise that is already there. Next thing I'm going to do is just increase the luminance slider and until the noisy gets to a good level. Frankly, noise reduction in Lightroom is not the best tool that Lightroom has. There are other options out there using plugins to reduce noise. But we did a good job of reducing the noise. This can affect the detail on the bird. So sometimes you may need to apply some additional sharpening to bring some of that detail back or texture or clarity. But for now, this is a good result. And here we are. This is the photo I just edited for you using the concepts of light, color, and detail to guide our eyes to where we want it. And we brought light to the bird, to the body. We added additional light to the head. We added texture and clarity to the bird. We make the color more vibrant. We also then apply a vignette that not only darken the areas around the bird, but also soften those areas to make the bird pop a little more from the busy background. So this is the final result. I hope you like it. Now, I told you that there are some better tools out there to deal with noise. And we have tools like Topaz Denoise AI or the XO Pure Raw 2, or now even on one no noise. So there are plenty of plugins that do a great job of reducing noise. And I just wanted to show you quickly. So this is an image, same image, same edits, other than noise reduction and sharpening. And I did this one doing DxO Pure Raw. So I processed that image first with DxO Pure Raw 2, and then I copy and pasted the settings from my prior edit. I'm gonna lock the zoom position. And here's the pure raw version. And here's the version we just edited in Lightroom alone. And I hope you can see that using a tool like DxO Pure Raw, it completely eliminated the noise, but it also protected the detail in areas that were important to the image. Again, this is the Lightroom only version. And this is the version where we first process with the XO Pure Raw. And you can see so much more detail on the bird. If you take images in which you use high ISO, ISO 2500, 3000, many times even higher, investing in a tool like the XO Pure Raw 2 or Topaz Denoise, I think it's a, it's a good investment. Well, amigos, I hope you like uh, this quick edit using light, color, and detail to guide our eyes. And I'm gonna like leave you with this video I did some time ago with the initial review of the XO Pure Raw. I hope you enjoy it and consider purchasing it. Don't forget to subscribe, send me your comments, give me a thumbs up, tell your friends about this channel, and I'll see you next time.